The United States is one of the most dynamic and innovative countries in the world. Our nation's success in areas such as agriculture, manufacturing, computer technology, and medicine can be traced in a large measure to our respect for and protection of intellectual property. The patent system added the fuel of interest to the fire of genius. Today, patents are completely worthless. And they're being given out every single year kind of willy-nilly. The problem is fighting, you have the patent, but they're going to beat you to death because they have money and they will just outlast you. And is there any suggestion or... or uh... It's too high for everybody. It's not good for the patent holder either. Property, whether it's real estate or IP, and you need all of the rights, otherwise they're not valuable, you have a serious potential problem of holdout. Just the stuff that actually make it, makes it to courts is costing innovators and implementers over $11 billion a year to operating companies. What are some of the public policy issues that you're hearing from the, uh, this, uh, the people showcasing their wares here? Yeah, patent protection, patent protection, patent protection. Intellectual property, or IP, is the cornerstone of innovation in our continually evolving world. The creative minds of the world were able to utilize patents in order to protect their findings from theft, abuse, and exploitation. Specified by our forefathers in Article 1, Section 8, Clause 8 of the U.S. Constitution, the Congress shall have power to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. However, as time progressed, problems soon arose putting the patent system under scrutiny. This backlash led to an immediate change of the patent system with the Copyright Act of 1790 and many more revisions in the future. The Patent Act was one of the very first acts that Congress passed in 1790. Uh, Thomas Jefferson actually examined the very first patent and it issued in, uh, I think, 1791. Despite these revisions, there are still some issues that remain. Helping us navigate through this unfamiliar system is Mike Miller. My name is Mike Miller. I'm the Director of Product Development for Helen and Titan North America, a uh, global corporation. One thing most people don't realize is that creating a patent today is a lot different than how it used to be. It used to be that we were on a, a first to invent process. So if I kept a notebook full of ideas and wrote down the dates and carefully denoted it and had somebody witness, like they signed on that date, and, oh yeah, I acknowledge that Mike invented this in 1999. Um, and if somebody filed a patent 20 years later and I showed them this notebook, and I can prove, disprove their patent. I can say, no, you didn't invent that. I invented it. However, many problems soon arose. One that stands out is the exploitation of patent holdout, where companies routinely ignore patents and resist patent owner demands because the odds of getting caught aren't that high. When you're negotiating with multiple owners of property, whether it's real estate or IP, and you need all of the rights, otherwise they're not valuable, you have a serious potential problem of holdout. However, many companies can't afford the luxury of purchasing all the patents involved in the manufacturing of their product. So for instance, a car which requires many parts to work costs the manufacturer thousands of dollars to make, which in turn makes the car much more expensive for the consumer to buy. So if most patents are just ignored, why are people still creating them? So if we think that there's an opportunity to have some IP or intellectual property uh, and have that used as a financial advantage. Um, some companies will, even if they don't expect to use the idea that they'll take out a patent anyway to block competitors from pursuing that idea, but we don't, we don't employ that tactic a lot. This tactic is usually looked down upon, however, companies still use it to gain a competitive advantage. Another common concern about the patent system is if it actually helps or hinders innovation. From our perspective, um, it helps innovation because there, it's, and this is just a classic example, it's, it's motivation for us to 
spend money on research and development and with the expectation that we'll be able to reap some sort of profit or, or get some sort of return on that investment. So does the patent system really favor large companies over small companies like so many claim? In some senses, it, it, it costs money to go pursue a patent and you have to have some intellectual property with some patent lawyers at your disposal. So um, the challenge is for small companies to cough up part of your patent uh, or ownership as like a collateral to get money, seed money for, for your company. So that can be a problem for really small companies. Um, but for us, you know, we don't have that problem at all. We've got lawyers on staff. Um, we've got money to spend on intellectual property 